It's a very cold and frigid day in Cleveland today, so what better day to do a review? Now today, we're gonna be taking you through the plugin called Dehancer. Now Dehancer is one of the most popular plugins on the market today. It's a film emulation plugin. And instead of doing a tutorial, because I see so many of those out there, there are plenty of resources out there to show you how to use this plugin. I'm going to show you how you can use it in your post-production workflow and take into consideration lens filters and how you can combine lens filters, the look that you get with them, with the looks you can achieve with Dehancer. So let's take a look. Now, as you can see here, the plugin has plenty of sliders. It's meant to be a one-stop shop for grading as a whole, and it actually flows from top to bottom. So you point it to what camera your footage was shot on, and it'll optimize the plugin for that camera's color space. So we rarely shoot on film here. We're mostly digital, but we're constantly looking for new ways to achieve creative looks using any means necessary. And the advantage of using something like Tehancer in addition to all of its awesome features is being able to dial in the intensity of certain effects very quickly and efficiently. We have used Dehancer uh, with After Effects. It's available for After Effects Premiere and Lightroom as well. Um, but we're gonna take a quick look at the plugin for DaVinci Resolve. So let's dive in. Now a quick note, as with any effects in Resolve, um, you typically wanna throw this on the very last node when doing your grade, but I could see what they were going for and then it's almost unneeded to make more nodes if this is the look that you wanna go for. A good workflow would be maybe getting the look you want with Dehancer and adjusting things like contrast and your primaries by making you know nodes before the Dehancer node. So you can do, you can essentially work backwards. You can do um, your look with Dehancer first, get your look, um, get your film print that you want, do your grain, your bloom, all that good stuff. And then making you know your contrast, saturation, highlight, shadows adjustments before Dehancer. So you're working backwards from a typical grade. In any case, it's best practice to do your color balance, then your corrections, and then get to styling the image to your taste. But like I said, with something like Dehancer, it's okay to work backwards. Just make sure you're throwing all your adjustments and your corrections before the Dehancer node. Now we can't achieve things like film grain or that 100% film look with just diffusion filters. We used a Hollywood Black Magic filter and also a Black Promise filter, two extremely common filters, almost overused filters. Now these clips feature a clip with Dehancer applied. And then, like I said, there's the 1 4th Hollywood Black Magic filter and a 1 4th Black Promise filter. And you kind of see a pattern going on where you can't achieve the lens filter look with Dehancer. I mean, you could, um, it would just be very time consuming. So like I said, using these two in tandem, throwing like a Black Promise on, and then enhancing some of the effects that you get with that, with Dehancer, I feel like would be a really strong workflow. Um, most DPs want to give their image a specific look in camera. So instead of switching to a more intense filter, so if you wanted to switch to a one half diffusion for a wide shot, you can keep that one fourth diffusion filter on and then enhance its effects using Dehancer. So instead of buying or renting an entire filter set, you can rent you know one filter or buy one filter and uh, just use that and then enhance with Dehancer, pun intended. There's no real formula, no matter what anybody says on the internet, to match filters to focal lengths because footage and lighting contrasts are always gonna affect your perception of sharpness and what level of detail that your eye wants at the time. But like I said, using Dehancer in tandem with certain lens filters is an extremely strong way to get a really cool creative look. Now another thing to keep in mind when using these diffusion filters is what aperture you're shooting at. And it could have a massive effect on how noticeable certain aspects of the image are. These shots at T2.2 make that highlight bloom much more noticeable than the earlier images due to the depth of focus and sharpness. So after looking at these images, you can see why Dehancer could be a time saver both on set and in post, if you use it correctly. I'm seeing more and more examples of people using Dehancer as a one-stop shop for grading an image entirely in one node. You can make presets for future projects using Dehancer looks. So like I said, huge time saver. Now, one of the reasons we initially made the switch to DaVinci Resolve as a company was because of the collaboration possibilities within the software. I could see taking footage 
and making a look with Dehancer and then handing the project off to a colorist for a more complete and accurate grade. And as a DP, obviously you wanna get everything on set. You wanna get the closest to the look on set as possible as a DP. So knowing that you can dial in your look on set and then maybe do a quick look using Dehancer, you know, play with some sliders, get a decent look, get some film grain if that's what you're going for for that certain project. And then handing that off to a colorist for um, a more complete and accurate grade. And it just allows for more creativity in your workflow without having to worry about, you know, expensive camera equipment to achieve that film look, which for many people, including myself, is completely unfeasible. Now, my main concern with most plugins on the market today is you don't really know what you're getting when it comes to how it processes the image. Some black box plugins that we've played with here aren't really transparent about their internal arithmetic or how it interacts with your footage to really achieve these looks that could completely crush things. Also, a big advantage that grading nodes have is seeing the process from raw image to final and being able to tweak certain nodes to your liking. Dehancer is fantastic for achieving that creative look, but it may not be for someone who wants complete control over every aspect of their final image, and that's okay. It's designed to be efficient and really helps you streamline your post-production workflow by automating tasks like color grading and other visual aspects of the image. This can allow your team to focus on other aspects of the project as a whole. I appreciate how much time and, and thought they put into developing these film prints for this plugin. Um, I do feel like the plugin for Resolve, it, it reminds me a bit of uh, Adobe Premiere, just in the way it's set up, you know, top to bottom with all those sliders. I don't think it's a bad thing for beginners, but most people who color in Resolve are not beginners. And uh, just being able to see the, the Resolve plugin itself being a little bit more robust, I think would, would do wonder, just kind of gearing it more towards the typical Resolve user. Now there's definitely a time and place to use Dehancer. It may not be for every project, but I think overall it's a great tool to have in your workflow toolbox. And like I said, combining the looks that you can achieve with Dehancer with something like diffusion filters, I think you can get some really creative looks and I can't wait to see what people can achieve using this. I hope that the images that I showed you helped you make a decision. If you're interested in Dehancer, you can use our promo code CLOCKWORK9 for 10% off. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.